Here is the general reaction for an E2 elimination. Over here on the left, we have an alkyl halide. The X is a generic halogen. Our halogen is attached to our alpha carbon. And then there's a beta carbon attached to that. And a beta proton is necessary in this mechanism. So the alkyl halide is going to react with a strong base. So an alk oxide, so a positive charge on sodium, a negative charge on our alk oxide. And the strong base in the alkyl halide will react to give you an alkene. The double bond will form between your alpha and your beta carbon, like that. Let's take a look at the mechanism for the E2 elimination. So I'm just going to redraw our original alkyl halide. So let's go ahead and put that in there. These four atoms are the most important ones in the mechanism. All these atoms are in the same plane. That's why we drew a straight line to represent the bond is in the plane of the page. And then on this carbon, there's something else coming out at us, something else going away from us, and the same on this carbon. Something coming out at us, something going away from us. So in our mechanism, our base is going to come along. So I'm just going to draw a generic strong base here with a lone pair of electrons and a negative one formal charge. That lone pair of electrons is going to act as a Bronsted-Lowry base. It is going to be a proton acceptor. So this lone pair of electrons is going to take this proton. And it takes that proton, leaving the two electrons in this bond behind. These two electrons are going to move in here to form your double bond between your two carbons. And the reaction doesn't stop there, because if it did, this carbon over here on the right would have five bonds to it, and we know that's not possible. So that carbon has to lose a bond somewhere, and the easiest place for it to lose a bond is for the electrons in this covalent bond to come off onto your halogen. So let's go ahead and draw the products of our mechanism here. So the double bond is going to form between our two carbons like that and then the the halogen had three lone pairs of electrons around it it just gained one more and that will give it a negative one formal charge and it is stable as a leaving group since it has the electron configuration of a noble gas so this mechanism is a concerted mechanism meaning all of this stuff happens at the same time and therefore the overall rate of the reaction for an E2 elimination is going to depend on the concentration of two things it's going to depend on the concentration of of your alkyl halide as well as your base. So it's a bimolecular um, reaction, which is where the two comes from in E2. So we're saying it's an elimination reaction, and the two means that the rate depends on the concentration of two of the reactants. This is in contrast to the E1 mechanism, which we talked about in earlier videos. The other important thing to note about this mechanism is, uh, is again, the fact that those four atoms that we talked about, the hydrogen, the carbon, the carbon, and the halogen, are in the same plane. So let's go ahead and draw that again, just to emphasize the point. So we have, we have that hydrogen bonded to a carbon, bonded to another carbon, bonded to a halogen. And all four of those atoms are in the same plane. This is necessary in the mechanism because we form a double bond in our products. right? We form a pi bond over here for our products. And the orbitals have to overlap in a certain way. And it turns out that way is when everything is in the same plane. So we could say that those four atoms are coplanar. So this would be an example of the four atoms being coplanar. So let me go ahead and write that. This is coplanar. We have our hydrogen and our halogen on opposite sides. So we could call this uh, anti-coplanar. So an anti-coplanar relationship. And we can see the difference between anti-coplanar conformation if we go ahead and draw an example of the other version, right? The hydrogen and the halogen being on the same side. So this, this is an example where all four atoms are coplanar. So we'll go ahead and write that. But this time, the hydrogen and the halogen are on the same side. So we call this a syn coplanar conformation. And since these are single bonds we're talking about, free rotation about these sigma bonds, right? I could think about you know, this bond over here on the right for the syn coplanar conformation rotating to give me the anti-coplanar, which is necessary for the E2 elimination mechanism. So anti-coplanar is a requirement in order for this reaction to occur. And sometimes you won't see uh, anti-coplanar uh, as the term used. Sometimes you'll see the term, let's go ahead and write this here. Sometimes you'll see the term anti anti-periplanar. 
And anti-peri planar just means that it might not be exactly everything might not be exactly in, in the in the same plane, um, so it's it's close enough. Okay, so anti-peri planar is the term that that most textbooks will use. So an anti-peri planar conformation is necessary. Let's look at an actual mechanism. Uh, for an E2 elimination reaction. So let's look at a, a real reaction here. Let's start with let's start with tert butyl chloride. So here we have tert butyl chloride like that. We'll go ahead and put our lone pairs of electrons on the chlorine, and uh, we're going to react this with a strong base. So let's say sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is going to give us hydroxide anions in solution. So let me go ahead and draw my hydroxide anions in there. And when we're doing this reaction, uh, we first focus in on the alkyl halide, and we can identify our alpha and our beta carbons. So this is my alpha carbon right here, the one attached to the chlorine. And then possible beta carbons. All right, so let me go ahead and write this in here, alpha. Possible beta carbons, well, this could be a beta carbon, this could be a beta carbon, or this could be a beta carbon. So those are all possible beta carbons here. And they're all three are equivalent, so it doesn't really matter which one we choose. Let's just take, let's just take a proton coming off of this beta carbon right here. So we'll say that is the proton involved in our mechanism. And when we think about this mechanism, we know that the base is going to take that proton. So this base is going to take that proton. The electrons in that bond are going to move into here to form our double bond. And this all happens at the same time the electrons in, in this single bond bond are going to kick off onto the chlorine. So let's go ahead and draw the products. All right, so what would we make? Well, we had an OH minus over here, right? So two lone pairs of electrons are not going to participate in this acid-base reaction. One lone pair of electron picked up that proton, so you form a water molecule, and the charge goes away, because OH minus and H plus give you H2O. Your other product, your main organic product here, would have a a double bond in it like that, so you'd form this alkene, and then you'd also get chlorine over here. It used to have three lone pairs of electrons, now it has four lone pairs, giving it a negative one formal charge. So that is the E2 elimination mechanism. Uh, the most important thing to remember is the anti-periplanar arrangement of those atoms.